Consumer products company Edgewell Personal Care, or ticker symbol EPC, they reported earnings for the fourth quarter, exceeding expectations on both the top and bottom lines, driven by strong sales growth across all segments. The maker of Banana Boat and Wet Ones raised its fiscal year revenue outlook, now expecting sales to grow between 2 and 4%. Joining us now to discuss, we've got Edgewell Personal Care CFO Daniel Sullivan. Dan, thanks for taking the time here with us on Yahoo Finance. When you think of some of the catalysts for this quarter, what really stuck out to you? Yeah, good morning. It's great to be here and thank you. Um, look, I think first of all, we're operating in largely healthy categories. Uh, and that's been the case certainly in the U.S. for the better part of the last year. Uh, and we're taking advantage of that, obviously. So that's one. I think two, we've got healthy brands and we're executing really well at Shelf. Our distribution outcomes across the portfolio have been very strong. Uh, these are brands that consumers know and like and appreciate. Uh, and that's obviously been a catalyst. And then thirdly, look, there's been pricing that's been brought into the category. We've participated in that as well. All of those are the, are the tailwinds that, yeah, you, you mentioned it. We were quite pleased with the quarter, 3% organic top line growth. Uh, and that was our seventh straight quarter of year over year growth. Because the, uh, of, of the higher prices, Daniel, do you see consumers buying fewer razor blades, fewer replenishment razors, trying to push some of these products to the edge of how long they should be used? No, you know, we haven't seen that. I mean, look, first of all, we operate in categories that are, are largely non-discretionary, right? They're, they're personal hygiene, they're part of, of daily regiment. We also operate largely at the mid-tier within pricing across the categories in which we compete. And so we haven't seen consumer behavior. We've seen elasticities actually below historical levels. And we haven't seen signs of trade down. Now, the interesting thing is within Shave, we're the only supplier that actually participates in all areas of the category. As a branded business, we participate also in private label, we participate in disposable. So if the consumer does start to make trades and maybe shift down from a price point perspective, we're, we're well positioned to, to succeed. And, and it's Julie here, just to put a fine point on that. So you're not yet seeing that, kind of, are you guys gaining any market share, for example, in this environment already? Are you seeing any signs of that in various categories? Yeah, we held share really for the quarter across our U.S. total U.S. portfolio, which was a good a good outcome for us. We gained share internationally in many international markets, including uh, Germany, which is an important market for us. We held share in Japan, where we're the market leader. And so overall, again, I think we're seeing healthy consumption right now across the categories. Uh, and we estimate that, that we're holding or gaining share in about 75 percent of our portfolio. And if you're gaining share internationally, uh, that's good news at a time when the dollar is uh, coming down a little bit from its highs, right? So, so talk me through the currency effects as well and what you have seen, what you expect to see this year, how much of a lift that could give to you guys. Yeah, look, it's, it's a volatile uh, currency market for sure. Just when you, you get on the other side of inflation, you're met with a strengthening dollar. That seems to have eased. Now, that'll take some time to work its way through. A lot of that'll be trapped uh, in inventory until we move the product. Uh, but you did mention we took our guide up to, to 2 to 4% on the top line, largely as a result uh, of the easing of the dollar. I think the important thing is to actually also look at the business on a constant currency level. I think that's the best indicator of performance. And our outlook this year, constant currency, is for 8% EBITDA growth and 12% EPS growth. Daniel, I was in my recent, uh, I was in Target recently. I, I go down to the consumer products section. There seems to be a lot of just new stuff new creams for your face, new razors, touting new blades. What's your whiz-bang product innovation this year? Do you have a, like one or two products that you think can cut through this clutter? Yeah, I'll give, you, I'll give you a product and a brand. I think the brand itself is the Billy brand. We bought it a year ago. We launched it exclusively at Walmart in this past fiscal year. It's now making its retail, uh, national retail launch um, with tremendous theater and in-store activation. It is the disruptor of the category. It gained a 17 share at Walmart in one year. So we're, we're quite excited about that. I think from a product level, you know, you look at this consumer behavior around do it yourself, do it at home, particularly on the female side. Um, that insight has led us to be quite active in new product development. Dermaplaning, big idea for us. It was the fastest growing product on Amazon. Daniel, real quick, ago. real quick, because it's funny you mentioned yeah. dermaplaning. One of our producers here actually wanted us to bring that up with you. What drives that? I, I've never even heard of it before. I do. Yeah, I think it's, it's largely come out of the pandemic where I think women now uh, hesitant to go back into the salon. Again, picking up on that 
sort of do it yourself, do it at home spirit. Uh, so derma planning, big idea. We've added now waxes and the pills into the assortment. And now you start to really think about it less as a shave category and more as a grooming or hair removal category. And these products make total sense. Look, I, I agree, Daniel, uh, as, as a person Women who- Women and Brad. Yeah, <laughs> as a person who cuts his own hair many times, um, it does help quite a bit. Um, just lastly, while we do have you, I was, I was noticing within the margins as well, you were talking about some of the gaining share and, and the consumption habits. Uh, has, has any of that come at the rate of kind of sacrificing the margins where you're seeing consumers opt for a lower price as you're even taking more share? No, we haven't. It's a great question. I think we, we've been pretty proactive in price. Where we're, where we're market leader in categories, we, we've led the market in pricing. In many places like Shave here in the US, where we're number two, we fast followed. Um, so we've been, we've been pretty bullish. And in fact, if you looked at our margin profile in this past quarter, it was the healthiest we've been in 18 months. Essentially, the gains from pricing and cost savings, we call it productivity, fully offset the impact of inflation. That's the first time we've said that in two years. So we're actually quite bullish right now on the overall margin profile for the business. All right, we'll leave it there. Daniel Sullivan, Edgewell Personal Care CFO. Thanks for taking the time. We appreciate it. Thanks, great to be with you.